guys! I'm excited to be back this week with another video project. This week I'm going to be highlighting one of my favorite artists, American painter Wayne Thiebaud. Wayne Thiebaud is an oil painter who's best known for his paintings of cakes, pies, candies, and other sweet treats like ice cream sundaes and gumballs. He also painted a lot of everyday objects like shoes and lipsticks. And he used a lot of pastel colors in his work which really gives it a nostalgic and warm and inviting feel to it. I'm going to be using watercolor and colored pencil for this project. I know you're probably wondering why I keep using watercolor, color pencil, and oil pastel, but a lot of art supply stores are closed right now and it's tough to get supplies, so I thought I would use what most of us have at home. If you have acrylic paint already at your house, that's probably what I would be using for this project, um, but I want to try to use what most people have around so that more people can do the project. Now, I know we're not going to be able to get Wayne Thiebaud's brush stroke technique down with watercolor, that's for sure, but we can still look at the way he used blues and violets in his shadows and yellow in his lights and other interesting color choices he's made. We can also get a feel for his subject matter and just gain an overall appreciation of his work. So I love Wayne Thiebaud, I love sweets, and I'm excited to share this project this week. I hope you like it. Wayne Thiebaud painted a lot of Americana objects and he used a lot of pastels and then a lot of yellow in his lights and blues and violets in his shadows. So we're going to try to do the same thing in our painting of this ice cream sundae. What I'm going to do is start out by showing you how to draw the ice cream. I'm going to have to pull the paper to myself to correct parts of it because um, it's a little crooked and it's far away from me. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine how far down I want the cherry to start. So that's about here. And then I'm going to imagine how long the ice cream is. And then I'm going to start by drawing the curve of the ice cream sundae. I'm going to put this a little to the left here. I'm going to draw the curve of the glass that the ice cream sundae is in. It's just a little hump like this. Draw light until it's right. I'm drawing darker so that you can see it on camera. And I'm just going to draw that curve and I'm going to bring it in a little bit towards the bottom on each side. And you see when I mess up, I'm not erasing right away, I'm leaving the lines. I do that because it's easier to get the lines down and then erase what I don't want. That way I, I don't end up drawing over my mistake again and again. So I've got this first section of the glass down. I'm going to do the same thing with this side. I'm just going to do a little half scallop over here, a little half curve, and then I'm going to do it over here on this side. I'm going to try to make them about the same. They're not perfect. That's okay. We're just practicing here. I'm going to bring it in like this, make a little curve on the sides. If you can see that. Bring it down. And then I'm going to connect it at the bottom like this. My Sunday glass looks a little wider than his. That's okay. If you hear a cat meowing in the background, that one's not mine. That's a stray cat that's been hanging around the house meowing outside of the window all day. Okay, so I've got both sides of my Sunday glass now. I'm going to go ahead and draw the stem. So I'm just going to draw this on either side. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to bring it down right under the center.
anytime I'm making mistakes, I'm just gonna keep working and then go back and fix it. I make a lot of mistakes when I paint and it's fine. We're all going to because we're learning. Every time we do it, we're learning a little more. It's not about the mistakes you make, it's about whether or not you keep working through them. Right? Okay. I'm going to draw the little circle at the bottom here. It's kind of like a little decoration on the glass, like a little ball. I love those. I don't know why I love that so much, but I just love the idea of it. And I'm also going to draw the bottom of the glass here. Like a little round part here on the bottom. Like that. Then I'm going to draw the bottom lip of the glass like this. It just kind of looks like the same shape of the curve I just drew, but it goes a little out. All right. Now before I move on, I'm going to stop this so I can check my glass. The paper's too far away for me to see it properly. So I'm going to pause this and pull it towards me and check my glass and make sure I have it the way I want it. Okay, I had it mostly how I want it. I corrected a little bit down here on the bottom, but now I'm going to add, while I'm already down here, I'm going to add this background line behind it. That tells us the glass is a little closer to us in the background. It gives it something to sit on. So I'm just going to make it as straight as I can here. Then I'm going to add a line down here for the foreground. You don't have to do this part, but I think it looks nice. It tells us, again, where the glass is. It gives us more information, right? Got this one here. Now I'm going to move on back to the top of the glass here, and I am going to draw this lip of the glass. The little extra detail I'm adding. I've just drawn this little lip of the glass here. Also going to bring this down. You don't have to do this part, but I am. Just adding to the sides of the glass here. Okay, now I'm going to start with the shape of my ice cream. This makes me, every time I look at his paintings, I just want to eat a lot of sweets. <laughs> you know, Wayne Thiebaud worked at a stand that sold ice creams and hot dog in the summer when he was like 14 years old. And I'm sure that's part of why he... Uh, painted a lot of objects like this. I'm sure it made an impact on him. But he, he did, he worked at an ice cream and hot dog stand and then he quit. He got involved in the arts program at his college. He went on to be an illustrator for Walt Disney and worked for Walt Disney for a while. And they Here I accidentally said he was an artist in the army. He was actually an artist in the Air Force. My apologies. Career with a lot of outside influence. Let's see. I'm going to put the shape of my cherry in here. And when I put my cherry in here, I am also going to leave, I'm going to mark out a little space where I want the highlights to be, the shiny parts of the cherry. I'm just going to mark those out so that I remember to leave them white for a while while we're painting. Okay, so I've got my cherry, I mean my ice cream drawn out. And what I'm going to do is kind of go in and watercolor just the bottom of it. And then I'm going to use color pencils to go in with some of these darker details that you see. The first thing I'm going to do is take a red and I'm going to add a lot of water so that it's mostly pink. You can see here how light 
this pink is. I don't want it so watery that it runs everywhere, but I want it watery enough that it looks light pink and not bright red. So I'm just gonna go in here and watercolor the ice cream. I'm gonna leave it a little lighter. The light is coming from this side, so I'm gonna leave it a little lighter on this side. You'll probably wanna go back and lighten up your drawing before you start painting, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm leaving it a little darker. Just gonna leave this side of the ice cream a little darker. And maybe a little bit right here to make it look a little more round. Actually gonna take a little bit of that pink and go into the this part of the glass, the lip of the glass, and also the glass down here. I'm gonna take it to the middle here too and add little bits of it down here in the bottom of the glass because we know that this is reflecting this. So we're just gonna add a little bit of it down here too. Got this part down. Now I want to move on to the blues. The side with the shadows has a lot of violets and blues. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my blue. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it to where it's not super dark, but I want it about this dark. Going to, got out of the lines there a little bit, didn't I? Oops. Paint this lip of the glass blue. A little darker up top here and on the side. And then I'm going to paint this side of it blue. And I'm going to paint a lot of this ball darker blue. I'm leaving a little spot in the middle to keep it shiny. Oh, I've just realized I've forgotten to sketch in this shadow, so I better stop and do that. The shadow falls across the bottom of this glass here. Go straight out. And then Branches out a little like this. We know the shadow is on the right because all this light is coming over here from the left. So I've got that sketched in. And I'm going to use that blue, but a little darker. I'm actually gonna mix a little red in it and make kind of a purple. And with that purple, that violet, I'm going to Make that the shadow on the outside here. I'll add a little bit of red to the middle. Okay, I've got that down. <laughs> I'm going to take for this left side here, I'm gonna take some yellow. It's almost like a greenish yellow. And again, I'm gonna paint the lip of the glass and this side of the glass. I'm gonna bring it down and paint this side of the glass and add some yellow in the bottom here. The yellow is really representing a lot of the light. There we go, I've got that. I'm gonna take some water and just smooth that out. There you go. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to the top and I'm just gonna take a little bit of 
that purple that we used down there and add it here. Let's add a little more red to that. It's going to add it here for some shadow. I think I used a little too much water. That's the cherry shadow here. I'm just going to add some of that in. Also, I'm going to take kind of a bright red. I'm just kind of putting colors in places I think they'll look nice. To smooth that out. It's a little too dark. I'm just going to smooth it out here. I got a little too dark on this side, so I just put some water in. I'm going to dab it out a little bit and try again. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to put some red in the cherry here. I'm going to keep my light spots light. The highlights. The shiny spots. And I'm going to go back into all this with colored pencil in a second. Got to lighten the side of this a little bit again. Yeah, that's nice. I'm going to leave it like this for right now and let it dry some. I'm going to um, put in some of the background and the colors on the bottom here. I'm going to use kind of that same violet blue down here at the very bottom. For the back, I'm going to use mostly water but a little bit of blue. Let me get a bigger brush here. Mostly water, but a little bit of blue for the back. I want a little color. The pink might need, be a nice background for this too, but I'm gonna use this kind of gray blue, or not gray blue, but light blue. mostly water. This is not watercolor paper. This is Bristol. I'm just using what I have. There we go. <laughs> the hair is coming off of it. Okay. My background there. Just enough color to make it look like there's a background there. I'm going to use a very, very, very light almost orange for my bottom here. Again, it's mostly water, but I think it'll look nice next to this blue. I'm trying not to go over the areas I've already painted because I don't want the colors to run, but if it does, so be it. Now I've got most of this down. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to come back into it with some colored pencil and that part really makes it pop. You'd be surprised how it makes it pop. So let me let this dry and uh, we'll pick back up in just a second. Get your colored pencils ready. I still have a few parts drying but for the most part I can get started on my Sunday. I'm going to start with my blue. I'll just sharpen it a tiny bit here. And we're really just going to start adding some colors that are a little darker. I know the blue is going to be a lot on the darker side of the glass because we're using blue in our shadows. And I'm not outlining the entire thing. I'm just adding a little bit of line variety here. I have a dark blue and a light blue. I'm going to be using light blue towards the bottom of the glass. 
mostly. Switching them out here. <laughs> I'm going to use a little and then skip a little bit and then use a little more. Just pulling some bright colors through the outline of this gloss. Where else do I want to add this blue? A little bit right here. Another shadow on this side. A little bit here. I'm going to add some shadow or some blue here. I'm going to skip a little. And where I skipped, I'm just going to take this bright blue and fill it in with the bright blue. Same over here. I'm going to use some bright blue here. If you only have one color of blue, that's fine. You can just skip a little. You can use your watercolor to do this. If you don't have colored pencils, you can use oil pastel or crayon. Down here at the bottom in this little glass ball, I know a lot of that is darker. Add some there. I'm going to add some where I know the glass is touching the table. I'm going to start with that dark blue around the bottom. Almost outlining it here. Really dark where the shadow touches the glass. Then I'm going to use some bright blue underneath that. Just right under it. Also some here. Some in this glass ball. I'm going to use a little bright blue here. This side of the glass. I'm even going to color over some of this watercolor. I keep this bottom part kind of light here. I'm going to use a little more bright blue over here. I might put some on this side of the ice cream. Just outlining it almost with this bright color. Coloring over the ice cream a little bit. Lightly, very lightly. Kind of in circles. I use my dark blue right under the cherry where I know it's sitting on the ice cream. And then color a little bit over the red, just a little. Let's see, where else can I add this blue? Here. Okay, and I think I'm going to pick it back up in a minute. But for now, I'm going to switch my color to, um, I think I'll do the red and the yellows next. I'm going to take a yellow and really darken the sides of this glass and leaving the middle a little lighter. A lot of it here. I'm going to go outside the line a little bit here. I like that. Darken it here, here. I might add a little bit of yellow right here on pink side of the glass. Maybe a little up here in these lines. A little on this side of the ice cream. And maybe on this side of the cherry a little yellow. Just kind of kind of color over that. I'm going to take my red, put some bold reds in here. This middle part of the glass. Also right here where they connect. Down here at the bottom. Just kind of dragging colors through. I'm not outlining the whole thing. I'm just adding it where I think it looks nice. Color in this cherry shadow a little bit more. Color in my cherry some. So the watercolor was just a nice base. A little bit of that here. Just light detail, slowly adding on. I think 
I'd like to add some green in here. So I'm going to grab a green and I'm going to do very little bits of green, maybe where the yellow and blue would start to mix. That's fun. I like that. I don't want it all to be one color. I want it to kind of I want it to have a lot of interesting colors that we can look at, right? Switch back to my blue here. Switch back to my green on this side of the glass. I think that looks nice there. All right. I think I'm going to take my dark blue and actually add a little more dark to this cherry. Just coloring lightly over the watercolor to build up that color. Maybe around the top here. Oh, cute. Let's see. The background. I'm going to go over these lines that separate the background. Take some green and do that too. Just using the greens, the yellows, the reds, and I'm kind of going next to them with each color. There, some of this red in here. There we go. Even on top of it, some. Use a little bit of red in the shadow. I'm going to use some, a lot more bright red on this side. You can even see some of my pencil marks, but that's all right. That's how I want it. Let's see. Some bright blue on the outside of the shadow here. All right, and so we're about done. You can go back and touch up areas that you want to touch up with this. You can take it even further and try to put even more detail in it if you want. Let's see. I'm going to take this watercolor and use just a damp brush with just water on it and go over some of those shiny spots so that they're not so bright white. All right, there we go. If you have white, I think I have a white watercolor, I mean a white colored pencil. You can use that to pop in a few highlights or lighten areas if you got too dark. I don't know what I've done with my colored pencils. Yeah. Um, if you want to lighten up a few areas and you have a white colored pencil, you can do that too. Like maybe some of the middle of this area. You don't have to. The white you left should be fine, but sometimes it's fun, right? Let's kind of go over and blend it a little. Okay, so we didn't have oil pastel. I mean, we didn't have oil paints, but we were able to do a little Wayne Tebow inspired ice cream sundae and learn a little bit about the colors he uses. And the subject he likes to paint. There you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll be back again next week with another project. And I can't wait to talk to you again next week. See you soon. Bye.